the Great North Woods, to the Rockbound Coast, and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, we look back at the anniversary of a police officer who lost his life in the course of duty and what has happened since. Plus, more cases of West Nile virus have been found in birds testing positive around the state. And residents of Blue Hill are voicing concerns over new multi-million dollar housing developments in their town. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories and a bunch more coming up for you this morning. But first, a check of the forecast. Looking like a pretty nice day ahead today. Partly cloudy. We'll see some sunshine out there. Shouldn't be bad at all. No, it seems like it. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. Your morning weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College in Calais. Check out the new aquaculture technology program. Don't miss out on free college. Alrighty, we had some areas of dense fog developing in a few spots this morning. Some in near parts of Bank or some in Washington County too. Other spots further off towards the west seeing some areas of dense fog that of course will be going away as we get the day going. There is a small crab advisory that is posted until 8 p.m. as we had towards you Tuesday along the coast and further off towards the south and west. So this will expire later this evening because of some actress start that we've been noticing along the coast. On land, we've had some clouds passing through last night. Nothing too ridiculous. We'll have a few clouds passing through today and sunshine coming out too, which will help to burn that fog off. Let's zoom things out right now. We have some clouds over parts of the ocean, some more active weather further off towards the west. We will have some opportunities for rain coming in very soon. Futurecast moving forward. Just a part of the cloudy sky for us today and I'm much going on later on tonight, but later this week we will have opportunities for rain to enter the picture. As for the winds, not too bad. Roughly at about five to ten miles per hour or so. Nothing too ridiculous on the way with the wind anytime soon. So your forecast coming up for today: upper 60s under a party cloudy sky, and that east wind getting up to around five miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a lot of sunshine, few passing clouds, temperatures in the upper 60s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. We'll get a look at that five day a little later on. Well, yesterday marked the third anniversary of the passing of Hancock County Sheriff's Deputy Luke Gross. Gross lost his life in the line of duty while responding to a hit and run in 2021. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with members of the public safety community that continue to honor and remember him. It was a huge impact, a huge hole. And three years later, that hole's still there. On September 23, 2021, Hancock County Sheriff's Deputy Luke Gross was fatally struck by a vehicle while picking up debris from a crash along Route 3 in Trenton. For so many, Gross left a major impact on the communities he served. We all had a special bond with Luke. Whether you were the victim of a crime or at an accident scene or had the blessing to work with him each day. Those who worked alongside Gross say he served with honor and distinction for 18 years. Luke taught us a lot while he was alive and he continues to teach us and inspire us even for the last three years. Members of public safety across the county are showing their support. We received a plate from the sheriff's office that uh, we display on my vehicle you know, every year at this time. Dedham's fire chief also reminds folks that crashes are very frequent along Route 3 and it is vital to obey the move over law and be vigilant. The more we can do to honor Luke's legacy and remind everybody about you know, paying attention when they're on the roadways. We want to go home too after the call. According to a spokesperson with the Maine State Police, no one was charged in connection with Deputy Gross's death. Gross did have safety gear at the time of the incident, but the sheriff's office has taken measures to increase safety, including upgraded light bars and lights that mount to their officers' shoulders to prevent another loss. It's way more than just about you being tough or getting something done quickly. Be safe always. In Ellsworth, Grace Blanchard, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. In other news this morning, a Waterville man has pleaded not guilty to murder charges. 20-year-old Tyler Quarian entered that plea during a court appearance Monday in Augusta. Quarian was indicted on Thursday in connection with the shooting death of 22-year-old Justin Erola. Quarian was then arrested on Friday for murder, manslaughter and possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. Arola was allegedly shot by Quarian shortly after 8 o'clock on February 19th on South Grove Street in Waterville. He's currently being held without bail now, but that could change um, as a bail hearing is held in the near future. 
A 60-year-old man was found dead following a house fire in Auburn. It was around 1.30 Monday morning when fire crews were called to Washington Street. The home was engulfed in flames and crews later found the body of a man believed to be Stephen Barry. Authorities say Barry lived alone at the home with his cat. The state fire marshal's office is now looking for a cause of the fire. The Charleston Fire Department had to call on neighboring towns to help snuff out a machinery fire. They were called to a logging operation on Davis Road around 2.30 Monday afternoon. It was in a remote location with no water sources nearby. Charleston called on departments from neighboring communities to help get water to the scene. And once access was gained, the fire was quickly knocked down and no injuries are reported. Now to a flurry of school threats creating concern across the state. Earlier yesterday, leaders say a potential threat forced the evacuation of Mattawancook Junior High School in Lincoln. All students are said to be safe, with classes set to return to a normal schedule today. But that adds to other threats from Freeport to Dexter, York to Bethel, all dealing with this recently. In Gorham, a potential threat that popped up turned out to be a hoax that first surfaced in 2016. Mal Meyer reports from Gorham. I've seen a lot of threats. I always report them. Brianna Bullier is a senior at Gorham High School. I see a lot on social media. I, it will be like, um, it will be on one person's story and then the next minute you'll see it on five other stories. It's important for folks when they see something or hear something that they say something. Police look at where the threats are coming from and the facts to figure out if they pose a danger or not. Police is definitely a, a, a large draw on our resources. Um, obviously, when uh, these types of threats come in, we take them very seriously. It's just like adds like a fear of coming to school, even though I feel very safe in our school. In recent years, districts have devoted more resources to safety with new procedures, installing security cameras and bringing in law enforcement. It's just like different having like so much more security in school because school used to just be school. The stress of all of this has a real impact on a student's ability to focus and learn. But when there are threats, potential threats or perceived threats, it makes it really hard to do that because they're in a survival mode. I think kids are remarkable that they can still learn and pay attention in school when there's something, something else on their mind a lot of the time. Oh, okay. Catherine Paul has seen how school has changed over her 20-year teaching career. I feel like I'm the protector and I have to hold the room for kids who are nervous or who want to talk about things. Providing reassurance is one of the things Claudine Emerson thinks the school does well. We're here, the faculty, the staff, everyone is here to protect students. And so we make sure we communicate that. And I think the key is to just talk about it openly and honestly and have good relationships with each other. Each and every student always has someone they can go to. It's a very welcoming environment and that's what makes it feel safe here. That was Mal Meyer reporting. In other news, West Nile virus has been identified in three more counties in Maine. The Maine CDC says wild birds in Piscataquis, Sagadahawk and Washington counties have now tested positive. An alpaca in Lincoln County also tested positive, and a bird in Lincoln County had previously tested positive over the summer. West Nile virus was also found in Waldo County. Meanwhile, mosquito pools in Penobscot County have also tested positive for Triple E. All of those illnesses are spread through the bite of an infected mosquito. The CDC is urging Maine people and visitors to protect themselves with mosquito repellents and by wearing long sleeves and pants. They also urge people to use screens on their windows and doors. Construction on the Tyconic Bridge between Waterville and Winslow continues as Chinbro works to replace the aging structure. Portions of that bridge are 100 years old and are no longer useful. That's why the Maine Department of Transportation began reconstruction plans on the bridge in 2023. Crews are currently putting up steel for phase one of the project. They're also placing concrete for an abutment. The new bridge, which is expected to be finished in 2027, will carry five lanes of traffic, just like the existing bridge. The new structure will also feature widened shoulders for bicyclists and include sidewalks on both sides for pedestrians. Well, fall is officially here and the critical need for blood donations continues. Carolyn King, the executive director of the American Red Cross for Northern and Eastern Maine, says the blood supply has improved since summer, but it is still very fragile. 
Blood on the shelf is what saves people's lives, so we need that blood to be on the shelf, ready for somebody's mom, somebody's neighbor, somebody's friend, somebody who needs it. Only three out of 100 Americans can donate blood. King says it only takes an hour from start to finish. She says every donation is key to making sure all patients relying on life-saving transfusions get the care they need, including car accident victims and those living with sickle cell disease. You can get more information or make an appointment by visiting redcross.org. Anyone who donates before September 30th will also get a $15 e-gift card. Gives you a little incentive to go out and give the gift of life. Right. There's always um, a need, and I've just always been really impressed with the staff there, at least at the Bangor one. They're very amicable. They're good at making you comfortable and quick to crack a joke, too. They make it easy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. The time now is 8.10. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, vape companies may be targeting kids with vapes disguised like everyday school supplies. We'll learn more. But first, another check of that weather forecast. A partly cloudy day ahead today with highs near 68 degrees. Partly cloudy overnight with areas of fog, lows dropping down to the mid-40s. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a chance of a few showers rolling through the area. The highs tomorrow, 65 degrees. We'll be right back. Class leading safety features at every turn. A Hyundai Tucson. Lease an all wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 1.99% APR or up to $1250 bonus cash. See your local Bangor Hyundai dealer. You can feel it when your dream becomes a pursuit. And with Vitiligo, the pursuit for your pigment is no exception. It's time you had a proven choice to help restore what's yours. Opsalura is the first and only FDA-approved prescription treatment for non-segmental vitiligo. Proven to help repigment skin over time. Restoring what's yours is possible with a steroid-free cream that you can apply yourself. Opsalura can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB or hepatitis B or C. Serious lung infections, skin cancer, blood clots, and low blood cell counts occurred with Opsalura. In people taking JAK inhibitors, serious infections, increased risk of death, lymphoma, other cancers, and major cardiovascular events have occurred. The most common side effects were acne and itching where applied. Repigmentation is possible. Ask your dermatologist today about starting or refilling Opsalura. Pursue it. When you need tires, no matter the size, Bangor Tire will service your ride and get you back on the road quick and safely. Master mechanics in the consumer division will repair your brakes, exhaust, front end alignments, and much more. Truckers, take exit 180 from I-95 for your new tires or flat repair with minimal wait time. Always free shuttle and delivery of your car in the greater Bangor area. Take Littlefield Avenue to 514 Colbrook Road, Herman, right beside Dysart. BangorTire.com. We're more than just a tire store. residents is up in arms about a proposed housing development project on the Salt Pond Blueberry Barrens in Blue Hill. Our Doug Banks explains. People in and around the Blue Hill area have raised concerns about a proposed housing project that one resident says would include nine multi-million dollar priced houses built upon an undeveloped piece of land. Blue Hill resident Larry Lefkowitz told WVII the Salt Pond Blueberry Barrens was formerly a commercial blueberry farm owned by the Allen family in Blue Hill. He says a developer based in Kennebunk purchased the property from the family about a year ago for approximately $900,000. Obviously, Blue Hill needs more housing, but we need housing for people like teachers and nurses. We don't need uh, multi-million dollar homes. According to Cole, the land is home to various wildlife and says the housing project raises concerns over pollution, erosion, and the potential impact on the environment. What people don't understand is that even though Blue Hill itself doesn't have strong zoning ordinances, the state of Maine has subdivision review criteria that any local planning board has to fulfill. 20 things on that review criteria. And uh, number eight actually is aesthetic natural and cultural impact. This piece of property is mentioned specifically in the 1999 Blue Hill Comprehensive Plan as an area of note 
that should be protected. Cole says the developer revised their proposal to address those environmental concerns in the Blue Hill Planning Board has asked for a third party to review it. But discussions have also been had about local stakeholders potentially purchasing the land, including the Blue Hill Heritage Trust. According to Lefkowitz, there's the possibility of setting up a community-led entity that would raise the funds necessary to purchase the land and then donate it to the Heritage Trust. WVII reached out to the developer but did not receive a response. In Blue Hill, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Meanwhile, a local food pantry in Ellsworth has recently raised thousands of dollars to support their communities while gearing up for their biggest fundraiser of the year. Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry serves thousands of people facing food insecurity and they rely on municipal and individual donations. In their third annual Fill the Grand fundraiser, their goal was to fill the 400 seats in the Grand Theater in downtown Ellsworth with donations and raise $10,000. So far, they've raised $8,000 and are still accepting donations. They hope to raise another two grand by the end of this week to meet their goal. The community has surrounded the food pantry and the community comes out and, and shells us money all the time and helps us out with whatever we can do just to help the neighbors that are in need. We are working hard to fill the pantry with food for our local neighbors who are in need and also our long-term goal is to attempt to, you know, lessen that need and help people by becoming more of a community resource hub in the future. The pantry is also getting ready for their biggest fundraising events of the year in partnership with Darlings Chevrolet. The second annual Darlings Drives Out Hunger event will feature live and silent auction items, live music and much more. With that fundraiser, they hope to raise at least $30,000 and it all kicks off at the Darlings showroom in Ellsworth on October 3rd. Tickets are now on sale to learn more, you can visit our website at foxbangor.com. According to a poll from the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, around 17% of high schoolers in Maine admitted to using e-cigarette or vape devices. Some of those devices are now disguised as common school supplies or even contain built-in video games. Our Augusta reporter, Corey Bouchard, spoke with advocates to learn more about what parents should be aware of. We see just about everything that you could imagine is a vape these days. Mateo Hardy is a junior at Coney High School. He says tobacco companies are targeting youth in Maine schools by creating vapes that look like everyday school supplies, such as pens, highlighters, and more. Hoodies that have sort of a concealed um, ability to smoke with inside that, so those are very hard to see um, for you know school um, administrators and teachers, um, even peers, to see that that's happening in the school. Um, also, like I said, one of the things that we saw this year was, um, you know, uh, vaping product that looks like a video game, that, that is a video game and also a vape in one. The problem, Hardy says, isn't just related to vapes, but also Zin, which are small pouches of nicotine similar to chewing tobacco. I have seen people, you know, that have taken out their vape or, you know, have pulled out Zins in the middle of class and put and, you know, put them in their lips. And then, you know, a teacher really doesn't know what a Zin looks like because it looks like a piece of gum. Hackett says many parents she's spoken to weren't aware that these products existed. It's so important for parents to be aware and then also um, to be prepared, right? That, that young people might be seeing these things in schools, might be seeing these products in stores or online, um, and be ready to talk to your kids about these things in a way that is um, uh, not aggressive and um, not judgmental, but really opens up the conversation. Hardy adds this message to his peers who may be struggling with vape and tobacco use. The tobacco companies have targeted you. You know, you are a victim here, and that is something that you shouldn't be ashamed about, but you should talk about it. Tell them, tell people about how, you know, the tobacco companies targeted you and used you to make money and, you know, ask for help. It, it's totally okay to ask for help. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. I mean, we were talking last hour that um, things have changed a lot since you were in high school. Yeah, yeah they were. we were allowed to smoke. You know, I, right. I, I don't know what they were thinking at the time. It was just the way the culture was then. We had, um, we had a smoking area at my high school in San Antonio right. back in the day. I think it wasn't too long after I graduated they got rid of all that. Around that time, they were really learning about how dangerous tobacco, the use of tobacco was and right. cancer levels. I think we're still learning what the long-term effects of vaping might be on people. Sure. So some of the early studies are not promising 
it's not good. Anytime you do something like that, it's not good for you. But, right. Yeah. These companies are just kind of changing how they target younger audiences. Yeah. Take it from somebody who's been addicted to tobacco before. Yeah. Um, don't start if you haven't started because it, right. it can run your life and cost you a lot of money. Definitely. And your health, for right. that matter, down the road. But if you have, yeah. there's always a way out. You just, it's sometimes helpful yeah. to have help with that. Well, like he said, you know, it, it, there's no shame in asking for help. They have right. quit lines. There's plenty right. of resources available. Right. You just have to be willing to do it. I know. Yeah. I know. It's a tough one. Yeah. All right. The time now is 8.20 after the break. Just because it's getting colder, that doesn't mean there's a lack of locally grown fresh produce to go around. We'll check out the scene from a local farmer's market as Good Morning Maine continues. Washington works for the wealthy and elites in places like New York City while leaving us behind. Congress is broken. It's not getting the job done. We need both parties to work together to lower electric bills, stop the flow of fentanyl, end the Biden-Harris inflation, and protect Social Security. Congress should work for us. We must bring balance to Washington and put people over politics. I'm Austin Terrio, and I approve this message. We are explorers, hard workers, the jack of all trades. We are Mainers. Maine Quit Link provides free nicotine quit medication, including gum, patches, and lozenges. No insurance needed, no copay, and no cost to Mainers. Because quitting tobacco with a little extra help is more successful than quitting on your own. Quit like a Mainer. Enroll online at MainQuitLink.com or call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. You bought your Toyota because Toyota is the longest lasting brand. You put your trust in Toyota's reputation for quality. Now put your trust in Toyota trained certified technicians who install genuine Toyota parts to help keep your Toyota a Toyota. Contact your New England Toyota dealer today to learn about affordable September service offers that feature genuine Toyota parts. Trust the experts at Toyota service centers and keep your Toyota a Toyota. Backed by popular demand, the Lucerne Inn in Dedham presents its amazing Sunday brunch. Join us every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for a culinary experience like no other. Indulge in an exquisite selection of dishes, all while enjoying breathtaking views. Seating is limited, so reservations are recommended, but walk-ins are always welcome. The Lucerne Inn Sunday Brunch, where great food meets a spectacular view. Call today to reserve your spot. Fresh produce continues to attract shoppers to the weekly downtown Waterville Farmers Market. Area farmers gather at the head of the Falls Park on Front Street every Thursday, where the public can pick out their own vegetables, fruit, bread, and cheese. Interest in the local fa farmers market has been growing. Vendors say they're seeing more and more people stop by. So like where I, where I live, you know, the cars go by me 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. They don't tend to stop. So uh, I do... At my age right now, I do just two farmers markets, Waterville and Augusta. It's a great market. I especially love the community mushroom farm. Excellent mushrooms, and the corn has been fantastic. The downtown Waterville Farmers Market is open 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Thursdays, and I love that they're open on Thursdays. I know the Bangor one is open on Sundays. Yeah. Um, Orno may be open on Sundays as well. I love Ornos, and those are two that go throughout the winter as well. So it's not just you know when um, it's not just when corn is no sure. longer in season. They have stuff year round. Yeah, uh, I was thinking of the last time I went to the Bangor one, there was a guy there selling all these different apples I had never heard of before. What do they call them? Heirloom apples or something? Yeah. Um, and boy. They are so good too, and and talk about fresh. You know, you don't I get know. like that that kind of stuff at the supermarket. I know. So. I need some cider. I think Holden does theirs on Friday. There's just yeah. endless. Brewer options. has one. I mean, look right. around. There's a few websites that list all the different farmers farmers markets, right. and they're on different days different of the week, days. which is yeah. great. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Love it. All right, the time now is 8:24. Let's get a full look at our weather forecast. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your morning weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College in Callis. Check out the new aquaculture technology program. Don't miss out on free college. Alrighty, we've had some areas of dense fog across parts of Washington County and the parts of Bangor and further off towards the west this morning. As we get some sunshine going, this will be going away. We do have a small craft advisory up along the coast until 8 p.m. this evening. Some active serve being noticed in these areas with a system. Not 
not too far away. And it's stirring the ocean up with wave heights at around five to seven feet. This is why we have that advisory posted at this time. And wave heights further out towards sea at around 10 feet at this time. Meanwhile, we've had clouds passing through this morning. Some of the clouds breaking up, so we will get some sunshine going on and off today. Mixed in with cloud cover, sunny fog, of course, going away. And temperatures not too bad, reaching for the upper 60s today. A little bit more activity further off towards the west, revealing some rain. We'll have our turn for rain coming up later on this week, but for now, we are staying dry. But for now, we get to talk about potential tropical cyclone Nina is developing across parts of the, uh, not too far away from the Gulf of Mexico right now. It's not quite in there at least just yet, but it will be developing very quickly. It's got winds up to 35 miles per hour, some higher gusts being observed. It's got tropical storm warnings actually posted. This thing is expected to intensify in a big hurry as it does make landfall in Florida coming up as we head towards Thursday evening, possibly as a category two hurricane with maximum sustained winds at around 110 miles per hour before it weakens as it does move inland. So if you know anyone across parts of Florida, make sure they're paying attention to this. This system is going to be moving and intensifying very quickly. Meanwhile, back here at home, we stay quiet. We'll be under a party cloudy sky moving forward for us today. Coming up later on tonight, we will be under a party cloudy sky. But notice that we will have areas of dense fog again and more clouds on the way as we head towards your Wednesday with a few showers possible. And we may keep those showers going as we head towards Wednesday night and a parts of Thursday as our next wave of energy begins to move in. Average rate temperature is 68 degrees. We'll do that today in the upper 60s. Mid 60s as we head towards your Wednesday. Lower 60s cooling off Thursday. And notice middle 60s Friday, upper 60s Saturday. 70s may get return Sunday and also into Monday. For Forecast for today, upper 60s, partly cloudy, east wind at around 5 miles per hour. Coming up for tonight, middle 40s, partly cloudy, areas of dense fog with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow, middle 60s, mostly cloudy, a few showers possible. Most of us should stay dry too. Southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Washington County Community College. Rain moves in again on Thursday with highs in the low 60s. More showers again Friday, highs in the mid 60s. Upper 60s Saturday under a partly cloudy sky. Main Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Main Paving specializes in commercial or residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. I'm a sixth grade teacher working full time while raising my own kids. Four years ago, we were getting ahead. But under Kamala Harris and Jared Golden, we're drowning. Food prices, energy bills, everything costs more today. Jared Golden voted to raise taxes on middle-class families. He even supported Biden and Harris's new energy tax that increased our heating costs. Biden and Kamala changed Jared Golden. He's not on our side anymore. Restoration Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basement -y. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted TC Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems for all things basement -y. The longest lasting, longest lasting brand. For best value, go with the longest lasting brand, Toyota. And at the Toyota Best Value event, you can get a Tundra, the longest lasting half ton truck with 1.99 financing, including hybrid and gas models. Plus, get two years no cost maintenance. The longest lasting, longest lasting brand. So for a vehicle with long lasting value, see your New England Toyota dealer, your all wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Main Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Main Paving specializes in commercial or residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. The Israeli offensive against Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon is intensifying. Hundreds of airstrikes have been launched with Israel warning residents of southern Lebanon to stay away from the group's weapons storage sites. Fox News senior correspondent Mike Tobin has the latest from Tel Aviv. 
Lebanon says this was the most deadly day since Israel and Hezbollah went to war in 2006 as Israel rained airstrikes down on southern Lebanon, attempting to stop Hezbollah rocket fire, which has menaced and threatened Israeli civilians for almost a year. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke directly to the Lebanese people. For too long, Hezbollah has been using you as human shields. It placed rockets in your living rooms and missiles in your garage. To prove that point, the IDF released video spokespeople say show a home used to store a missile complete with an opening for the weapon to be launched and airstrikes followed by secondary explosions as stored weapons detonated. Israel took the step of sending electronic communications to tens of thousands of Lebanese civilians, warning them to get away from stored Hezbollah weapons. We advise civilians from Lebanese villages located in and next to buildings and areas used by Hezbollah for military purpose, such as those used to store weapons. Panicked Lebanese civilians created a traffic jam, fleeing north to escape the bombing. Lebanese officials say the collateral damage from the Israeli airstrikes include two ambulance crews blown up, hundreds dead, more than a thousand injured. What we've seen over the last week has been dramatic, has been dramatic. The consequences on civilians has been huge. Through it all, Hezbollah continued to fire rockets into Israel. I feel more afraid, you know. I don't know what happened tomorrow, after tomorrow. Word tonight that Israel targeted the number three in Hezbollah's chain of command, Ali Karaki. Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, made the public statement that Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah now sits alone at the top, but that may have been premature. Hezbollah says Karaki is alive and moved to a protected space. In Tel Aviv, Mike Tobin, Fox News. Israel's military spokesperson Daniel Hagari says that Hezbollah launched 250 drones into Israel on Monday. AP News reports that Israeli strikes on Lebanon Monday killed more than 490 people, including more than 90 women and children. With just under six weeks to go before Election Day, both nominees are zeroing in on key swing states this week. Both campaigns are visiting Pennsylvania, seeing it as a path to victory. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has more from New York. We got to take our country back from these horrible people because if we win Pennsylvania, we win the whole thing. It's very simple. Former President Trump spent the day in battleground Pennsylvania. Trump visited a local grocery store to talk about inflation and spoke to farmers about how he would deal with China. My first call, I'm going to call up President Xi. I'm going to say you have to honor the deal you made. We made a deal, you'd buy $50 billion worth of American farm product, and I guarantee you he will buy it 100%. In the key state of North Carolina, Republicans are having to respond to reports gubernatorial candidate Mark Robinson made disturbing comments on a pornographic website. You folks want to focus on tabloid trash, and quite frankly, I am sick of it. First of all, what he said or didn't say is ultimately between him and the people of North Carolina. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris is calling for another debate with Trump and preparing to speak more about her economic plan. What we can do more to invest in the aspirations, the ambitions, and the dreams of the American people while addressing the challenges that they face. Polling still shows a tight race between Harris and Trump. A New York Times Siena poll has Harris ahead nationally by three points, but Trump with a narrow lead in the key states of North Carolina, Arizona, and Georgia. Harris plans to visit Pittsburgh and Arizona this week. Trump has an event in Savannah, Georgia, Tuesday. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Beginning this month, the U.S. Health and Human Services Department says ordering free COVID-19 test kits online will again be available. The HHS says the, this year's kits will detect certain strains of COVID and can be ordered ahead of the holidays when groups gather for celebrations. The agency hasn't yet given a firm date when the ordering can begin. An updated COVID-19 vaccine has also been approved by federal regulators. The CDC also recommends Americans get a new COVID shot for those six months and older. And coming up on the second half of the newscast, we'll hear from the Waterville Civil Air Patrol, who are a group of young people learning valuable life lessons and how to potentially save lives. We'll hear all about it as Good Morning Maine continues. I'll stand up to any politician, even in my own party, who tries to cut Social Security. I put people over politics, and I always will. 
I'm Austin Terrio, and I approve this message to protect Social Security. Driving the Nissan Rogue with Google built in is like... Hey, Google. Turn on Rocky's food. It's like the ultimate mm -hmm. connection. See why it's been awarded a Consumer Guide Best Buy and recommended by Consumer Reports. Drive the Nissan Rogue today. Now get a low $2.99 per month lease for 36 months on the 2024 Nissan Rogue. I'll stand up to any politician, even in my own party, who tries to cut Social Security. I put people over politics, and I always will. I'm Austin Terrio, and I approve this message to protect Social Security. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Tuesday, September 24th, 2024, and it is also National Voter Registration Day. This holiday encourages Americans to register to vote for the upcoming election. It's your chance to participate in our democracy. And if you've already registered to vote, this is a day to make sure your information is current so you won't run into any problems on election day. Um, last primary, I had to re-register, long story short. I did it just a couple days before the primary and that meant I couldn't vote. I don't know if it's the same for regular election day, but I was pretty bummed out. Mm. Um, and I had, I had wished I'd known that ahead of time. So if you have to re-register, um, we're six weeks out until yep. the election, so you'll want to do it pretty soon. This is a big one, too. Presidential elections always draw the biggest crowds out there. And what a shame it would be if you got in there on Election Day and found out you couldn't oh, vote. I'd so, be mad. Yeah. yeah. Check with your local town clerk, and they'll tell you the process that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Might be as easy as making a phone call. Yeah. All right. Time for history. On this day in history, back in 1789, Congress passed the Judiciary Act, which established the federal judiciary system in the U.S., the Office of the Attorney General, and also the composition of the Supreme Court. Hmm. In 1924, Boston, Massachusetts opened its very first airport. In 1934, Babe Ruth played his very last game before a packed crowd at Yankee Stadium. And in 1952, Kentucky Fried Chicken opened its very first franchise in Salt Lake City, Utah. Not Kentucky, but Utah. That followed the first KFC, which was founded by Colonel Harlan Sanders, who began selling fried chicken from a roadside restaurant in Kentucky. I love KFC chicken, but boy, wouldn't it be neat to go back in time and visit his little roadside stand and I know. see what it tastes like back then? I know, yeah. I would like to. Yeah. In 1963, the U.S. ratified a treaty to limit nuclear testing. That treaty was between the U.S., Great Britain, and the Soviet Union. In 1968, the TV news magazine 60 Minutes premiered on CBS. In 1969, the trial of eight anti-war activists got underway in Chicago. The so-called Chicago Eight were accused of inciting riots during the Democratic National Convention at the height of the Vietnam War. Their convictions and contempt charges were overturned the following year on appeal. It was explained to me earlier, they were also known as the Chicago 7. I guess eight were arrested, mm. but only seven were the ones that actually went on trial there and were convicted of those crimes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Misconception. In 1998, the U.S. Federal Reserve released $2 billion worth of $20 bills. The new bills featured enhanced security measures to make them more difficult to counterfeit. For birthdays today, they include actress Nia Vardalos, who is 62 years old today. You'll remember her from My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Also, singer and actor Ben Platt is 31. And this is also the birthday of the late Jim Henson, who died in 1990 at the age of 53. Henson, of course, was a puppeteer and filmmaker who created the Muppets and other beloved characters. So we remember him today on his birthday. Do you have a favorite Muppets character of all time? Oh, I like Ms. a lot of them. Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy? Yeah, yeah, she's crazy. Yeah. I love her, and I love her love for Kermit. Mm -hmm. They are crazy for each other, and I think it's very cute and sweet. Cute little story, yeah. yeah. I like Kermit. I like them all, too. Yeah. Animal, though. Animal. I, I, I was going to say animal, too. Yeah. Something about it's him. It's crazy, you know? yeah. So, also, yeah. it's my dad's birthday. My dad's name is Tim. He works for the city of Bangor. He's the best dad ever. He's awesome, and it's his birthday today, so happy birthday, Dad. We wish him a very good birthday mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. It's going to be a pretty good day for a birthday. Not yeah. going to rain on your parade if you're having a birthday parade. No, it'll be a nice day today. Partly cloudy. We'll see some sunshine. Mm -hmm. Maybe a good day to go for a walk this afternoon. Yes, sir. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast.
Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. Your morning weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College in Calais. Check out the new aquaculture technology program. Don't miss out on free college. Alrighty, we had some areas of dense fog developing in a few spots this morning. Some in near parts of Bank or some in Washington County too. Other spots further off towards the west seeing some areas of dense fog that of course will be going away as we get the day going. There is a small crab advisory that is posted until 8 p.m. as we had towards you Tuesday along the coast and further off towards the south and west. So this will expire later this evening because of some active start that we've been noticing along the coast. On land, we've had some clouds passing through last night. Nothing too ridiculous. We'll have a few clouds passing through today and sunshine coming out too, which will help to burn that fog off. Let's zoom things out right now. We have some clouds over parts of the ocean, some more active weather further off towards the west. We will have some opportunities for rain coming in very soon. Futurecast moving forward. Just a part of the cloudy sky for us today and I'm much going on later on tonight, but later this week we will have opportunities for rain to enter the picture. As for the winds, not too bad. Roughly at about five to ten miles per hour or so. Nothing too ridiculous on the way with the wind anytime soon. So your forecast coming up for today: upper 60s under a partly cloudy sky, and that east wind getting up to around five miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a lot of sunshine, few passing clouds, temperatures in the upper 60s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. Well, the Waterville Squadron Civil Air Patrol is an active group with cadets ages 12 to 21 years of age who are learning search and rescue skills, leadership training, as well as countless life lessons. Four of those cadets were recently promoted during a special ceremony in Waterville. Our Jody Hersey takes us there. A lot of people don't even know that Civil Air Patrol exists. The Waterville Composite Squadron Civil Air Patrol is the civilian auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force. It consists of cadets ages 12 to 21 and many adult senior members as well that support and supervise the cadets within the program. And we train cadets in emergency services and um, aerospace education as well as leadership and character and physical training. First Lieutenant Diana Southwick has been the squadron commander since 2019. Once a month we have a training exercise where the cadets and senior members train in search and rescue operations where they'll search for simulated downed planes or lost hikers. The Waterville Composite Squadron Civil Air Patrol meets here at the LaFleur Airport every Thursday night. And last week's gathering was a meeting that four of the cadets will never forget. Each of the four earned the Brigadier Billy Mitchell Award, which promotes the cadets to the rank of second lieutenant. <laughs> it's a milestone 17-year-old Travis Kammer of Waterville has been working to achieve for two years. I would describe it as challenging but rewarding. I'll be going into the Army as an E3 thanks to this award. 17-year-old Grace Kiernan of Anson has no plans of going into the military, but says being a part of the Civil Air Patrol has prepared her for a better future. I've learned a lot about aerospace and science and a bunch of different leadership techniques and how to be a better leader. In Waterville, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Congratulations to them. Yeah, a lot of hard work. Yes. All right, right after the break, Tyler Cruz will have the latest for sports. Don't go away. I was hurt in a bad motorcycle accident. I tried to handle it on my own, but I could tell quickly I was in way over my head. The other driver's insurance company was very difficult to work with. That's why I decided to call Joe. Smartest move I ever made. I went from being completely overwhelmed with doctor's appointments and medical bills to feeling normal again. Joe Bornstein's office took care of everything. I was completely satisfied with the outcome. I'd wish I'd called sooner. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Ah, taking the time to savor Thomas's crunchy yet soft bagels. Thanks, Tom. It's a uh, Tom, actually. Right, Tom. 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 Did you do that on purpose? Tom. Tom. How have we got to Tom? Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Something big is happening on Sylvan Road in Bangor. It's the big grand opening at the new Coastal Auto Parts store and warehouse. Saturday, October 5th is a big day. See the Crush Station monster truck, stop by for food, take advantage of great deals, and more. DIYers, make sure to visit the Milwaukee Tent Sale for money-saving specials. It's a big place. It's a big deal. 
It's the new Coastal Auto Parts Store Grand Opening, Saturday, October 5th from 8 to 3 on 200 Sylvan Road, Bangor. Come see us. Fall in love with your home again with acclaim replacement windows from Renewal by Anderson. Do you have broken, drafty, or high maintenance windows? We've got you covered. From consultation to installation, our acclaimed windows made with exclusive Fibrex composite material outperform traditional wood, aluminum, or vinyl. For reliable window and door replacement, choose Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. We have 30,000 ways to thank our loyal fans. Courtroom leader, the judge. Win one of three $10,000 cash prizes. You just won the game, guys! It's the 30K Thanks Arama giveaway. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. From Carl Alberg, Chief of Police. I can always tell when somebody's lying to me. Murder in a Small Town, series premiere tonight on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Over the weekend, Maine field hockey head coach Josette Babineau joined the 200-win club with a victory on Saturday in front of tons of fans and alumni, and the moment was a great representation of what she's built over the past 18 seasons. It just means a lot. It's just reflecting on like all the years. This weekend, Maine field hockey head coach Josette Babineau joined the 200 win club right here at home. And it was so special to be able to do this today. You know, she's been, played such a huge role in the whole program here. And it was just a really special day for her. She does everything that she possibly can for her players. And, you know, as hearing her talk, all she does is give credit to her players. But she deserves a ton of credit. She's a great coach. Babineau has spent the last 18 years at Maine. And every one of her wins has been with the Black Bears. I think also for me, the, the meaningful part is that, you know, this this is was my first head coaching job. So... All the wins have come, you know, at one school, and uh, that means a lot to me as well. And in those 18 years, the program has come quite a long way. Coach has been with the program for so long. She really put Mainfield Hockey on the map. Then I think about, you know, we started, when I started, we were on the football field. The football field needed to be replaced. A lot has gone on, obviously, behind the scenes. Uh, to keep growing and moving the program forward. Babineau brought Maine to the NCAA tournament in 2021. The university then cut the ribbon on a state-of-the-art facility last fall. And while she's been the overseer of it all, she knows it would not have come without those around her. Uh, just great, great players, always great people on and off the, the playing field. So it just makes me um, think about that and appreciate that, all the great athletes that I've coached and uh, also all the great staff that I've worked with. It's a special place, but it's a special place because of the people in our program. We're playing for so much bigger than what we play for on the field. We're playing for this this huge legacy that we have, all of the people behind us, everyone who works behind the scenes, and it's so special that we got to share it with everyone today. Big congratulations to her. Let's stay with the Black Bears. It was a good weekend for them. Maine football getting back to 500 with a big 26-15 win on the road at Merrimack. Again, it was a slow start for Maine, trailing 10-0 in the first, but the defense forced a three and out in their own territory that sparked the first touchdown of the game for the Black Bears. From that three and out on, Maine outscored Merrimack 26-5 including a 20 to nothing margin in the second half. The 26 points was Maine's best offensive output of the season, and the black hole defense really only allowed two field goals, so it was good complimentary football that head coach Jordan Stevens wants to build on. You know, that's the thing is like playing complimentary football is something that has to happen here at Maine. You know, we have to be able to do that, and, um, you know, we have to do that sooner in games, you know, and kind of build off each other. So. You know, definitely uh, pleased with you know, how our guys showed that they can do that. Let's go to some hockey now. Two weeks away from puck drop and our first USCHO online poll is here. And the Black Bears found themselves nationally ranked to start the year. Maine was picked 12th in the first poll of the year. Reigning national champs Denver started the season ranked first with 42 first place votes. They will come to the Alphonse first weekend of January. That should be a good series. There are six Hockey East teams ranked, BC and BU at 2-3. and three. Providence right under Maine at 13 and UMass at 14. Northeastern, the final Hockey East team ranked at 20th. 
Finishing up with some football, the Patriots starting the week with a bonus Monday practice as they prepare for a road trip out west to visit the defending NFC champs, the 49ers. The Pats coming off of a rough week, losing on the road to the Jets, getting beat pretty bad, 24-3. They had a really rough night offensively. The O-line, specifically the pass protection, has really been a problem this year. But Thursday was the first game the Patriots really got dominated in all around every facet of the game. And Gerard Mayo still thinks his guy guys can play to the identity of being a tough team. I don't want to jump to conclusions because after we controlled the line of scrimmage throughout the preseason and also controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, you know, the first two games and then to sit here and, and overreact on the third game and controlling the line of scrimmage, I don't want to do that. I still think we have a tough physical football team and and that's my expectation and that's also their expectation is to go out there and and establish your toughness and, and then by the four, in the fourth quarter, hopefully you have a chance to win. All right, that game at 1 p.m. Sunday. That is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Washington works for the wealthy and elites in places like New York City, while leaving us behind. Congress is broken. It's not getting the job done. We need both parties to work together to lower electric bills, stop the flow of fentanyl, end the Biden-Harris inflation, and protect Social Security. Congress should work for us. We must bring balance to Washington and put people over politics. I'm Austin Terrio, and I approve this message. Rota Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydro jetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain. Roto Rooter. When you want something, you pursue it. And with Vitiligo, the pursuit for your pigment is just the same. It's time you found a proven choice to help restore what's yours. Absolura is the first and only FDA-approved prescription treatment for non-segmental vitiligo. Proven to help repigment skin over time. Restoring what's yours. It really is possible with a steroid free cream that you can apply yourself. Opsilora can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB or hepatitis B or C. Serious lung infections, skin cancer, blood clots, and low blood cell counts occurred with Opsilora. In people taking JAK inhibitors, serious infections, increased risk of death, lymphoma, other cancers, and major cardiovascular events have occurred. The most common side effects were acne and itching where applied. Repigmentation is possible. Ask your dermatologist today about starting or refilling Absolura. Pursue it. Hurricane John makes landfall in Mexico. The Category 3 hurricane touched down in Mexico's southern Pacific coast Monday night. The National Hurricane Center says John rapidly strengthened to a Category 3 hurricane with winds reaching 120 miles per hour. The Hurricane Center warns of, quote, life-threatening storm surges and floods already hitting the state of Oaxaca, which has evacuated 3,000 people. Forecasters say John is likely to drop to a tropical storm as it heads inland. Nothing like that around here, though. That's no, good. Nice, nice stretch of weather upon us. Maybe a little rain later on in the week. Yeah. Here's yeah. Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Your morning weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College in Callis. Check out the new aquaculture technology program. Don't miss out on free college. All righty, we've had some areas of dense fog across parts of Washington County and the parts of Bangor and further off towards the west this morning. As we get some sunshine going, this will be going away. We do have a small crowd advisory up along the coast until 8 p.m. this evening. Some actors serve being noticed in these areas with a system not not too far away and it's stirring the ocean up with wave heights at around five to seven feet. This is why we have that advisory posted at this time and wave heights further out towards sea at around 10 feet 
at this time. Meanwhile, we've had clouds passing through this morning. Some of the clouds breaking up, so we will get some sunshine going on and off today. Mixed in with cloud cover, 30 fog, of course, going away. And temperatures not too bad, reaching for the upper 60s today. A little bit more activity further off towards the west, revealing some rain. We'll have our turn for rain coming up later on this week. But for now, we are staying dry. But for now, we get to talk about potential tropical cyclone Nina is developing across parts of the uh, not too far away from the Gulf of Mexico right now. It's not quite in there, at least just yet, but it will be developing very quickly. It's got winds up to 35 miles per hour, some higher gusts being observed. It's got tropical storm warnings actually posted. This thing is expected to intensify in a big hurry as it does make landfall in Florida coming up as we head towards Thursday evening, possibly as a category two hurricane with maximum sustained winds that are around 110 miles per hour before a weekend side as it does move inland. So if you know anyone across parts of Florida, make sure they're paying attention to this. This system is going to be moving and intensifying very quickly. Meanwhile, back here at home, we stay quiet. We'll be under a party cloudy sky moving forward for us today. Coming up later on tonight, we will be under a party cloudy sky, but notice that we will have areas of dense fog again and more clouds on the way as we head towards your Wednesday with a few showers possible. I mean, make it with showers going as we head towards Wednesday night and up parts of Thursday as our next wave of energy begins to move in. Average rate temperature is 68 degrees. We'll do that today in the upper 60s. Mid 60s as we head towards your Wednesday. Lower 60s cooling off Thursday and notice middle 60s Friday, upper 60s Saturday. 70s make a return Sunday and also into Monday. Forecast for today, upper 60s, partly cloudy, east wind at around 5 miles per hour. Coming up for tonight, middle 40s, partly cloudy, areas of dense fog with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow, middle 60s, mostly cloudy, a few showers possible. Most of us should stay dry too. Southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Washington County Community College. Rain moves in again on Thursday with highs in the low 60s. More showers again Friday, highs in the mid 60s. Upper 60s Saturday under a partly cloudy sky. Our country is counting on Bath Iron Works. 6,500 men and women building the most advanced naval ships in the world right here in Maine. So when extremist politicians threaten our jobs, I have to speak out. Austin Ontario supported shutting down the government. We could have lost the Navy contract that keeps Bath Iron Works running. Austin Terrio put his extreme agenda ahead of our jobs. DCCC is responsible for the content of this ad. Hood is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. Start with our award-winning country style. It's delicious on its own or like this. That. Even. Sure. Plus, it's got more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. Then there's Hood's flavors. We expertly blend in real fruit or savory herbs for an unbeatable taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood Cottage Cheese. Always good, always hood. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. Grab a cup. Fill it up. Top it off. Weigh it up. Here at Sweet Frog, you are in total control. Sweet Frog, where a secret ingredient is fun. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC. Spooky sequel gets its name called for a third time at the top of the box office. Studio estimates show Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice held on to first place in ticket sales, bringing in $26 million over the weekend. The second movie in the horror comedy franchise earned a tick more than the animated movie Transformers 1, which debuted at second with $25 million. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice has brought in more than $266 million domestically over three weeks in theaters. Meanwhile, horror film Speak No Evil finished in a distant third with $5.9 million, while the survival film Never Let Go debuted at fourth with 
five million. And, you know, Beetlejuice, the first one, it was kind of my favorite movie ever, yeah. so I've been a little nervous to see the second one, but I've heard good things. Yeah. As long as you don't say his name three times, I we're know. good. I know. Yeah. Are they hinting at a third? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, right. Yeah, down the road. They're yeah. making a lot of money on it, after all. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Finally, a huge king penguin chick named Pesto, who weighs <laughs> as much as both of his parents combined, has become a social media <laughs> celebrity and a star attraction at an Australian aquarium. Weighing in at 22 kilograms, or 49 pounds, at nine months old, Pesto is the heaviest penguin chick the Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium has ever had. Its education supervisor, Wasinta Early, said on Friday, by contrast, his doting foster parents, Hudson and Tango, weigh in at about 24 pounds each. Pesto's global fame has grown with size with more than 1.9 billion people around the world watching him on social media. I love Pesto. Yeah. Okay, we hope you have a great day. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs> Today on 25 Words or Less, you know her from... Oh, wow, I don't recognize any of these credits. Can we start doing background checks or something, please? Apparently it's Gabrielle Ruiz. And joining Gabrielle are sorority sisters, Kanisha and Kelly. He's an Atlanta institution, like the aquarium and drivers who don't yield to pedestrians. It's Ricky Smiley. And joining him are our returning champions, karaoke friends, folks, and Christopher. And now, her glam team all got tattoos that read, It Takes a Village. It's Meredith Vieira. <laughs> <laughs>